Well, welcome to another episode of The Platform and this is everything I love about the concept of doing it online and from a bedroom because you never know what can happen. Just yesterday I was uh, scrolling through Instagram which I very rarely do and I clicked on the search page and as I was scrolling down I clicked on a clip with a musician and was just blown away and uh, this is what I found. So her name is Tulay and I sent her a message on Instagram and the very next day we jumped on Skype and filmed this for the platform. Well look, it's, it's great to have you on the show and it's so random to just see like a video on Instagram and press play and see you're playing. Um, you're so amazing at what you do. How, how did you get involved with playing guitar? Well, I started when I was three and a half years old with my father because he was also a guitarist. Wow. So uh, he just uh, started to teach me like courses for fun, just to, to play with the guitar. And then I started to learn seriously when I was four years old with him. When you were four, is this in Vietnam? Uh, we were in Vietnam, yes. He passed away uh, already nine years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. But, so uh, when you were a kid and you're getting taught by your dad, like were you passionate about it too? Or was there like a pressure from your family to start to be, you know, concentrate on it? Well, when I was four years old, I, I didn't know anything, you know. <laughs> I could hardly even remember how I started. And uh, when I re could remember a little bit was when I was five, when I had the first performance. <laughs> and when I started to know, I already know that I already know how to play guitar. And, uh, of course, my father was very, very strict. And uh, he was a painter, actually. Wow. So he, he was working all the time at home. And uh, all he was there painting and I was next to him playing guitar. It's more like a habit, you know, you, every day you do the same thing, you don't feel it's a stretch or pressure or, uh, or you're really passionate about it, you just don't know, you just, this is what you do every day, like you wake up, you brush your teeth. And <laughs> <laughs> so at what age for you did you know that you were like really, really good at it? Well, at seven years old, I took the exam to enter the music conservatory in Hanoi. It's called the Vietnamese National Conservatory at the time. So I remember that I had to, for the first time, practice really hard and seriously. And uh, my father really put a lot of pressure. Like, there are many people who took the, take the exam, and the conservatory we choose only two people to go to study. So... This is uh, when you really have to take it serious. And yeah, I did it at and seven you, and years old. you got old. in? Did you get in? Yes. Wow. So what happens then? Do you like just study all the time, like living there or something? What happens? I studied there for 15 years. <gasps> uh, you know, the, the system at the time is very different. But now that you have to enter like, a, like an elementary school and then middle school and then university, so I started from the very first set in the conservatory until I graduated this 15 years. Wow. So I completed uh, in 2001, yeah. 2001, yeah. yes. of music you play there's a lot of clips online that I've seen the classical stuff is it like 
like yes. like what someone would study for piano, but you know how to do all those notes for guitar. Yes, uh, we have a lot of guitar composers, but also we play a lot of uh, transcription from piano or violin and transcript for guitar. So yeah, we call it classical music. Wow. So do you ever like get the urge to, I don't know, play Oasis Wonderwall or a Foo Fighters song? Like, can you rock out and play current music? Oh yeah, I do. I do. Actually, uh, when I was like 17, 18, I started to listen to pop and rock music a lot. And uh, my first favorite uh, pop rock band was the Beatles. Ah, wow. So, I played a lot of the Beatles and then some of the classic rock like Aerosmith, uh, Metallica, Nirvana, and oh it was so God. fun and it was so cool and it's different and I enjoyed it so much and still now I do play pop music sometimes and I do a lot of uh, arrangement of pop songs for classical guitar. There's a great video online with, uh, I think it's your daughters are playing like a Christmas song with you. That must be a pretty cool yeah, thing. Yeah, they are my two daughters. So that must be an amazing feeling to, to, to watch them grow and learn, thinking what you've learned as a kid. Yeah, actually teaching them uh, teaching them reminded me a lot about how I was studying with my father before and made me appreciate my father more, which at the time I was too small and too stubborn and, you know, you don't care so much and sometimes at some point you don't want to do it. But now you teach your own children and you feel really thankful for, for what he did to you. So how many yeah. hours do they, do they want to become like you and become like fully professional? Do, how many hours do they study? Well, they don't really practice much, you know, because uh, my time was different, you know, at the time we, we went to school only four hours a day in Vietnam, uh -huh. but now they have to do almost like full day at school and homework. And there are so many more other attractive things, you know, they go out, there's iPad and all of this uh, they want to do and I want them to grow up like a child, you know. I don't want to force them too much with studying. So as long as they keep playing and uh, they are in touch with music, but yeah. I don't push them to be a professional musician. So Unless you, how it goes. you and I are Skyping, you're in Bahrain. Like, um, how did you end up there? Well, I actually live in many different places because of the work of my husband. He's working for a hotel and company, and every three, four years, he has to move to a different place. So I just pack and carry my guitar and go along with him. <laughs> well, that can be fun adventures, but what do you think about Bahrain? Is it a cool place? It's a very nice place. It's a small island and surrounded by water, which is very good for music, I think, so <laughs> I'm very happy. Cool. So, so where's some of the places you've been where you've toured? Uh, touring, I've been to actually many places uh, in Asia, like Thailand, Malaysia, Nepal, India, uh, and Turkey, Bahrain, of course, Saudi Arabia, Bulgaria, Romania, Europe, Germany, France, uh, all the country, in, mostly in, in Europe. And uh, US, I started from last year and this year, and I plan to go more to US next year. But I've never been to Australia. Yeah, why not? I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to get you out here to play.
Do you ever watch like videos back that you post on 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 YouTube and what have you across your website and just look at your own talent and get surprised? Like, do you ever see it back with your hands and fingers and just think, "Wow, that's incredible." <laughs> you know what is the truth? I am uh, sometimes I'm scared to look at my own videos. Really? Because I feel like if I look at it, I'm gonna see only mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard, you know, but uh, also I know and I believe that um, recording videos is like the best way to learn, especially now that I don't study anymore with teachers or in the conservatory, but I still want to improve and I believe that there is always a way to get better. So the best is to record yourself and look at how you play and listen to yourself again is, is the best way to learn. So sometimes when I look at my own videos, it's no more like a pleasure of watching or enjoying, you know, it's more like looking for the mistake. <laughs> right, I understand. But like, the, it's so technical what you're doing with your left hand, like the, the, the amount of different choices your fingers are making on the strings and, and the, the quickness between your brain and doing that. How hard is it? Like, how long did it take you to, to really learn how to like do that well? You know, especially in, in classical music, it's, uh, it's very complicated. It's not like if you just play, let's say, a, a solo line, like in electric guitar, you have only one line of melody. Sometimes it could be very fast and impressive, but it's just one line. But when you play classical music, it's like you play more than one or two voices at the same time. I don't know if you, you can understand. So it's not just about the speed, but it's about the synchronization, you know, between the two hands and between the voices and to balance between the main melody line or the bass line or the, the middle line. And um, the best way to do is, I mean, the most important thing is you have to practice, you have to practice very slowly, you have to practice separately voices. Uh, so you can hear each voice clearly and then we have to practice with metronome to, to play with the right tempo and then you have to practice without the metronome to really be able to break everything. Right. Sometimes breaking the rule is, uh, is important and necessary to put your personality into music, you know. But then to do that well, you have to first follow the rule and really practice like a machine with the metronome. So all of this stuff is uh, behind the stage that people don't see and, and don't really understand how much uh, classical musicians have to, to put into it. And our job and our mission is to bring it on stage to play like a difficult piece, but it has to look easy. Yeah. And that's the most difficult point. Well, the thing I loved about watching some of your clips on your YouTube page is like there's moments in certain songs where you can you can see that you're really feeling like your your eyes are kind of closed and you feel the sound. That must be pretty amazing, right? Is that the best moment when you're actually playing when you're just so in tune that you feel that you feel that everything's perfect? Yeah, I think that is one of the most important thing in in playing any kind of music, not just classical music, you know, that you have to, to feel it. And then to feel it well, you have to play it well, and to have the good musicality is very important, but also important to have a very good technique. People sometimes say that it's not only about technique, it's about musicality. But if you have very good idea, a nice idea of musical musicality, and you don't know how to transfer it to your finger, then it still doesn't count. Right. So technique is like your equipment, it's like your weapon to bring your ideas. So both are important. And then if you can do both well and combine them together, then you bring it to the next level of just, just enjoy, but no more thinking about technique or about uh, musicality, but it's just about enjoying. And of course, yeah, it's like the the best kind of high that you could get.
I can only imagine when I watch because I certainly can't play guitar at all. So it's uh, it's amazing to watch someone who's really really good at it. Um, what sort of stuff do you get up to outside of playing? I notice there's a few pictures of your uh, on your Instagram. You, you certainly like the gym. No, I do everything. You know, I'm I'm a wife. I'm the mother of two children. I do gym almost every day. I swim. And I love to dance. And I cook. I clean, you know, as a normal mother, a normal uh, uh, daily routine. And of course, uh, when I'm on tour, I cannot do all of those things because uh, on tour you're just very busy and concentrate on concert and then meeting people. And and I don't drive and I don't drink. So that's the two things I don't do. Okay. Well, I love asking people, like, if they could live the ultimate dream, what it would be. So can I ask you that? What's What's your ultimate dream if you can live it? I think I am living a dream because uh, people always, we all know that the most two important thing in life is uh, family and career. And uh, I must say that until now I'm, I'm proud, I'm very happy that I could be able to do both. Not perfectly, not at the best, but I'm doing and I'm still, still going on it. So I can say that uh, I'm, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now and the most difficult thing is to be to balance you know between family and job and especially as a woman and um, I'm proud that I still do it both and of course uh, I have to say thanks to my family especially to my dear husband who is always beside me and not just keep me for him but you know, helping me a lot in my career. Oh, that's so cool. Tell us about how we can find you online and your socials. Oh, the, you can type in my name, Thule Guitarist. It's very cool. <laughs> very cool. Hey, it's so cool to have a quick chat with you on the show. I think you're amazing what you do and uh, all the best with it. Thank you so much, Andy. It's such a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I wish a lot of success to your show too. And thanks for introducing me. You're welcome. Your show. Very welcome. Really cool what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Super fun, super random to just jump on Skype and go around the world. And uh, super fun to film with someone in Bahrain. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the platform.